DCD podcast episode number <laughs> eighty. It's episode eighty. So, Andy, how are you? Fine. This is the second tip of the recording. Yeah, this is great. Yeah, we got, always like, gotta call it out. Yeah, we got whenever it happens. Yeah, we got like six minutes in, seven minutes in, something like that. And then I realized that Andy's audio was all jacked up. He would have been basically peaking and. Like it would it would have been like Julian on Lazy Gaming Guys basically, uh, all episode and I just didn't want that, so we started over. So Andy, how are you today? How how's your week been? Fine, you know. Yeah? Uh let me think. No highlights. No highlights. No highlights at all? Uh, I mean, I don't know. I guess I accompany someone while they door dash. What? Yeah. Like he's door dashing. I'm just I'm just chilling. Expand on this, please. Dylan from College Dropouts fame. Oh, Dylan! Hey, what up, Dylan? Uh, thanks for listening to the podcast, by the way. Uh, he's, he's commented on a couple, so I he door dash driver. And yeah. sometimes I just sit there while he does it. Really? Yeah. So, out of curiosity, is it lucrative? Do you think, or is I it? I mean, I mean, he wouldn't do it if it wasn't lucrative. Makes I guess like eighty to hundred dollars a day. That's not terrible. I feel like three hours of work. Okay, so eighty to hundred dollars a day on three hours of work is actually really good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, good for Dylan. And by the way, again, hi Dylan. Thanks for listening to the podcast. Hope you're uh, maybe you're listening to us while you're door dashing. You know, he the ex- to KSR. What's KSR? Kentucky Sports Radio <laughs> with Matt Jones. Like the Matt Jones, or no, not uh, not fat, not fat Rob. Okay, uh, Matt Jones of Kentucky sports fame. It, like he's just a radio host. He's famous. Okay, okay. and he wrote a book calling out Mitch McConnell. Okay, I thought big. it. I thought it might be Matt Jones who used to play uh, in the, the NFL. No, I'm thinking of Matt Jones. Matt Jones played for the Redskins, running back. No, I'm thinking of Matt. Matt Jones, wide receiver for the Jacksonville, and I'm not disputing what you're saying. That's a different Matt Jones. I was thinking you were talking about Matt Jones, wide receiver, played for the Jacksonville Jaguars, and he was drafted in the first round, 2005 draft. Um, I know him as a... He was a former sports radio personality. That's kind of weird. Um, But yeah, Matt Jones, I remember him being a uh, very talented young man as an athlete, and he was pretty good on the Jaguars and his career really took a turn for worse when he got caught in the offseason uh, doing cocaine on the side of the road in his car. And then from there, his career kind of went downhill. I mean, Matt Jones Uh-oh. was... This Matt Jones was drafted 2005, first round, 21st pick overall. My Matt Jones, I was talking about the football one. Third yeah. round, 2015 draft. Well... I mean, the Matt Jones I'm talking about played football, too. So you can't say the football one. They're both oh, yeah? football guys. Well, Matt Jones of KSR talks about college football. Okay, well, Matt Jones <laughs> that I was Matt talking Jones about. Matt Jones also, it's not like we're arguing over like a, a name that's like no, we Quincy are. Poindexter. We're all going over a very common name. Well, the Matt, Jones. the Matt Jones that I'm talking about, it says right here on Wikipedia, former sports radio personality. So there you go. Well, there's also Matt Jones, the actor. Yeah. Yeah, he's like an El Camino in Breaking Bad. Yeah. This Matt Jones <laughs> that I'm talking about went to the University of Arkansas. Uh, the Matt Jones I was referencing beginning went to Duke. 
and Transylvania. <laughs> this is the dumbest bit ever. This Alex, guy, what have you been watching This guy also played for <laughs> the Cincinnati Bengals. Anyway, oh, yeah, yeah. I don't I, actually. Matt. I don't even. Think <laughs> what are you playing? I don't even think he played for the Bengals. I think it was on their practice squad. <laughs> but um, this week, I've been watching a lot of Big Bang Theory. I'm trying to get through that with my wife. I uh, watched the final episode of Clone Wars. Uh, it, it was outstanding. It was probably the best thing, Star Wars, that I've seen in, in a while. And then it was May the 4th, and they put basically like all of the Star Wars movies that yeah. you might have to pay for. You they know put that them... was last episode, but I noticed you logged in Letterboxd, but didn't mention the last episode, by the way. Oh, that's true. So, um, <laughs> yeah, May the 4th, um, you know, I watched the last Star Wars movie with my wife. And then uh, other than that, I can't really think of anything else that I watched that was notable. You know, other than regular stuff, you know, Shark Tank and The Prophet and, you know, all the DVR stuff. Uh, no Rick and Morty. Oh, yeah, I did. Yeah, I watched the uh, newest episode of Rick and Morty. And then, well, the second newest episode. The the newest episode I haven't even watched yet. I have to watch that. I have it on my DVR. Surprisingly, it hasn't been spoiled by social Money media. Money in the Bank? Did not watch Money in the Bank. I was too tied up with Mother's Day stuff. So, And then it got spoiled for me. So, like, somebody on Twitter... Was it me? No, it was, was it me. It was not you. I tweeted. Someone was like, "What?" Like, there's a picture of the ending, and I was mm-hmm. like, "What would you rate the match?" I said, "Six star match." No, it wasn't you. It was somebody who I follow them on social media, and I really need to probably either mute them or, or unfollow them. And they cover they cover wrestling, and they never used to do this, but they do it now. Where they will kind of um, live tweet, you know, the event, but they'll live tweet, you know, the results of the matches. So even if you're like 10 minutes behind, which, by the way, can happen, like I've had my Internet go out in the middle of a WWE pay-per-view and then I'm just I'm just behind, you know, by five or six minutes. And these people on Twitter will ruin it for you. So this guy thought about not scrolling Twitter. Yeah, but <laughs> listen, dude, I was doing Mother's Day stuff and you get yeah, bored you. and I'm, you're going I'm through aiming. Twitter and I saw I saw the results and I go, well, I'll just watch it when I watch it. To reference Dylan again, he he's a big Liverpool fan. And every time they play, he turn like he turns off all notifications on his phone until he watches the game. Let's try that. I totally get that. I mean, I started this one thing that I used to do on Sundays. I, I really should go back to it, but I did it for a few Sundays and it was great. I basically turned my phone um, on airplane mode. So I got no text messages, yeah. no tweets, no emails, no nothing. It was great. Like, it was great to disconnect for a day. And I just sat there and I hung out with my wife for the day. Um, but yeah, that's what I've been watching, and then uh, this week I've been playing Animal Crossing and World of Warcraft. That's it. Andy, what have you been watching? What have you been playing? I watched to future reference the first listener question, uh, the Mummy from 1999, <laughs> <laughs> starring Brennan Fraser. Uh, it's like the Sonic movie in that I'm fully. I admit the movie sucks. But if you compared it to like, I, I rated four out of ten. But if you compared all my four out of tens, Sonic movie and The Mummy, they're fun movies. But the whole, I admit it's a bad movie. The, all of the Brendan Fraser, yeah, Mummy movies, they're they're not good. I mean, they're they're not they're, they're never know. gonna be in the not a fun the, time though the Library of Congress or whatever it's called, but. They're, they're National registry. Yeah, they're they're fun and and they're good for what they are. I mean, they're fun. They're entertaining. Uh, the, and then I watched Rhubarb, a short that came out today, uh, by Carson Runquist. He's a YouTuber. Mm-hmm. I watched from 1999, Bringing Out the Dead, directed by Martin Scorsese. Mm-hmm. 
starring Nicolas Cage. Oh, wow. Um, it was, it, 7 out of 10. It was good. Okay. It's just pretty long. <laughs> I mean, Scorsese stuff is always long. I mean, it just I, is. I, uh, I'm not complaining about it. I love his stuff, but I mean, it's it's always I mean, very I can long. watch a three-hour movie and not realize, but this one just felt long. It was only two yeah, hours long. That's fair. And then uh, Leo and the Professional uh, playing Halo Master Chief Collection. Mm-hmm. I've been me and my friends have been playing through the campaigns in Legendary. Ooh, good choice. Le- Legendary No Asso. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um and then I played a game of Monopoly. Like the board game or Yeah. Oh. Yeah. How long Monopoly? did it take how long did it take you? Uh I don't know, three hours. Yeah, but it was, that's the, the thing Xbox about Monopoly. Version, it takes a while. It was the Xbox version, so the math was all like quick. Yeah, but me and my friends just like go on like the trades, and me and trade like most of the game was us trading. Yeah, it's it. And it, if you're it, not involved it, with the trade, you have to watch people trade, and it's not like we're trading. Like I made like several trades where I traded six dollars for nine dollars. Yeah, I I have that game too, and um I love playing it with friends yeah. or uh even locally with my wife we play it yeah and the xbox one monopoly whatever it's called i forget what it's called monopoly party or something it's, but uh i'm it, not it's really it, good yeah um i'm not done with this topic but i do have to mention no keep going please i'm sorry a new ten dollar patreon supporter drake been a guest twice and he wants to use his stream Mm-hmm. on Castle Crashers Remastered. I own that game, so I'm totally down. And then I read something. I would actually buy it for Drake, but I own it all. I read, I read, I read a short story. Really? Called 8 O'Clock in the Morning hmm. by... I don't know if it's by. It's Ray something. Um, it is the short story that inspired They Live. Now I kind of want to watch that, or read it, rather. I'm sorry. It's on the internet. You can just, like, Google it, and it pops yeah, up. Yeah, I want to um, read it and then watch They Live Again. Cause... It's about six pages. It's it's a good read. God, I don't even know when I watched They Live. I don't By even, Ray Nelson. Like, when was the first episode of this podcast? It was a long time ago. 2018. Yeah, so I'd, I'd, I'd need to re-watch They Live, honestly. It's been that long since I watched it. So To answer the question from before, the original recording of this podcast, Alex asked when I made my first video. I was 10. came out 2009. Uh, Valentine's Day 2009, to be exact. Oh, there we go. Yeah, we were talking earlier about on, on the first recording that we had to throw away about... Uh, I don't know. Somehow we got on to Daniel of The Reasons I'm Broke, and I was like, oh, man, he's on episode like 402... Which basically yeah. means he's been doing it for right around eight years, uh, along with Kelly, his co-host and wife. And uh, great podcast, by the way. Check it out. But we were talking about like us getting to 999, where Andy says he'll quit. And yeah. uh, Jared, a.k.a. Spoon Sandwich, said he would tentatively take over as co-host. So there you go. If I'm here in 20 episode. years... You know, yeah, you're more to first welcome episode here. of the podcast is July eighth, twenty eighteen. That's pretty crazy. And the first DCD Film Club October seventh, twenty eighteen. Yeah, DCD Film Club, the segment that I'm growing to dislike more and more as time goes <laughs> on. Yeah, I really am. I really am. Maybe you should pick the movie that's in the notes. No, I got something worse for you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Worse than dick figures? Oh, I got something worse. I'll give it a 10 out of 10. Highly doubt it. Anyway. Something's telling me you didn't like Leon the Professional. But first topic. No, we're, we'll, we'll get to Leon the Professional. <laughs> and I will probably surprise you on that one. So first question. Question, listener questions. Uh, We got a few this week. Um, First one is one that I want to take a stab at. 
I want to see if I know the answer to this one, and I could be wrong. But it comes from Dumbest Sphinx, Patreon backer. I want to thank him for being a Patreon backer for many months now. Uh, he asks, why is Andy obsessed with the year 1999? Now, a lot of people would say, well, maybe he's a real big Prince fan. Or maybe he was a guy who was scared about Y2K. I was was alive during the Y2K phenomena. I was too, technically. Barely. My (laughs) guess... (laughs) The reason I say barely is my guess is that you're obsessed with the year 1999 because that is the year in which you were born. I would like to say I'm not obsessed with the year. Uh, I'm just pointing things out. (laughs) (laughs) But no, hold on, hold on. Let me finish. You're so vain. Let me finish. (laughs) Um, I want to, I have a list of me ranking all the movies from 1999 and okay. I'm trying to watch all the movies from 1999, and then guess what? I'll go to year 2000 and 2001. So I'm going to go through my entire life each year. <laughs> um, at the same time, also go to 98 and go backwards. Yeah, 98, 97, 96. Um, I don't know. I just I started at 1999. I mean, it's when you were born. I'm so also probably going to make a video of me ranking 1999 movies. So it's like not... Top, it, top 10 movies from 1999, and no one's going to watch it, but I made it for myself. So. But it's not a terrible... Oh, oh God. I'm, I'm the king of videos like that. I made it for myself videos. But um, actually, you know what's funny is some of those videos that I made for myself, and I, I put it up, and I'm like... Uh, especially on my YouTube channel, I'm like, oh, man, I'm doing this because I want to do it, and... You know, I, I think it'll be a cool video and I'm, I'll be proud of it and all that. Yeah. And then you, like, I did one recently and I was like. Really? Yeah. No, I did. It was for. <laughs> your last it, upload was four months ago. Just, oh, I know what you're talking about. I think I know what you're talking about now. Just leave me alone, Andy. I know what you're talking about. Um, But yeah, there, there was a, somebody reached out to me and they're like, yeah. we'd really like for you to review this product. And I was like, you know, I don't oh, know. Really? But I said to myself, you know, I really want to do it. You know, like I, I want to see if I could do a product review and make it cool. And um, the video kind of blew up. Like I, I logged in a couple months later. I'm like, oh, wow, they got a couple thousand views and it's got all these comments and I actually made money off of people buying the product on Amazon from an affiliate link. So, like, it's crazy. Whoa. Like, you know, like, sometimes you do a video just for yourself and it, it ends up being really cool. And I would watch the video where you review, like, all the movies from 1999. That would be kind of fun. I'm not reviewing all of them. I'm just doing a top ten. Like, Well, no, but, like, lists. doing a top ten would be kind of yeah. cool. It's not. And it's a top ten the YMS way. Mm-hmm. In which that it's just called top ten for the clickbait title, like top ten, but it's really just every single movie that came out that year that I would recommend watching. So that's so cool, and I'm still watching. That. Yeah, I would still watch that. And that's also, really you may cool. notice I watched "They Live" in the short story that inspired "They Live." And speaking of videos, I'm doing for myself. Here's a, <laughs> here's a, oh, is that not gonna focus? I wrote a, I'm making a video on "They Live," and yeah, there's a big script. Yeah, I mean, so I'm doing. I you know I'm doing stuff. I had somebody reach now out. Now I have today. to make the video now that I say it. So. Yeah, I I totally get it, man. I had somebody reach out today and say, "Hey, I'd like you to cover this topic on like a solo, separate Owl Talks Aliens episode." So I I'm I'm gonna do it. I'm just gonna figure out how to do it and do it. So um. Sometimes those are like the the coolest like things to do. Like even if it's just a one off, I uh, I just like, and I, I would watch I, it. Like I said, I, I want to re review. You better make it. I have to now. Um, <laughs> I want to re review like the original film club picks. You know, it's kind of funny, and and this might be a good like segue into the next listener question. Um. 
so first, before we get to that, because I, I don't really think that we're going to be able to give it an answer. I think it would be interesting for both of us to kind of go back and look at at least some of the film club picks because I, I think That's over time I'm planning I'm making a series out of. Yeah, I think over time, like both of us have kind of reevaluated things. And, and I will also say that I've rewatched several films, n- not just my picks, by the way, like Andy's picks, Patreon picks. I've gone back and rewatched and gone, well, maybe it was a little too forgiving or maybe I was a little bit too harsh on something i know i've certainly um are trying to unveil that you're actually a yogurt fan no definitely not a yogurt fan i want to be really clear on that but like a really good example would be hereditary which was one of andy's picks and we reviewed it and i had a very glowing review of it from what i remember on the podcast but then i went back and i rewatched it again and i was like i almost felt like i wasn't glowing enough towards it it was that good you know like i was like oh man this is sick this is excellent you know i'm trying to think of another one there was there was another one that i can't think of at the moment um synecdoche new york was another one that uh, upon further reflection and i'm just picking things that weren't my pick uh synecdoche new york was another one that upon further reflection like i realized that i i may have may have not been as positive about it as I should have been, even though my initial review was very positive. Uh, the fountain is another good one that like the more I thought about, the more I rewatched it, the more I loved it, even though again, I, I really liked it. Um, I don't know. I can't think of something that I hop in. No, please go ahead. Go take it. Uh, dazed and confused. I gave a six out of 10. I still think it's a six out of 10, but it's a great movie. Um, Goodfellas. It, it is. It's I good. gave an eight out of ten. Now I, it's a ten out of ten probably for me now. It's amazing. Um, what else? Things have gotten worse probably since. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Here we go. Freddy got fingered. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I gave it a one. It's a half star. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure Fight Club will be better if I read it. I don't know. Fight Club is amazing. Apocalypse I, Now is better than w- when we first did it. So here's the thing about Apocalypse Now that I didn't realize at the time. And I want to apologize to the listeners for this. It depends on the cut that you watch. Like, there's so many different cuts of Apocalypse Now. I didn't realize it until I did a little bit of research after the show. I thought there were three major cuts. I want to say there's about half. There's a ton. I want to say there's about half a dozen, maybe even more. And um, it depends on what cut you watch. Because, you know, depending on what kind of movie viewer you are, uh, you know different cuts may speak to you different ways. And, and the one that I watched was actually the, the ultimate cut, the, 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 final l- cut. The, the final cut, the last cut. And it was three hours long. And because I love the film, I loved it. But I, I sat there and I said to myself, like Alex, be realistic. If you knew nothing about this film, if you haven't seen this several times over, would you really be excited about watching something that, that has a clock time of over three hours? So like, I, I think that's, that's a notable thing that I missed. Would fear and loving Las Vegas to be a three to 10. I just don't like it. It just <laughs> doesn't resonate with me. You know, pick, picks from me. I think Gerald's game would probably be worse. Oh yeah. Uh, fantastic planet. I don't know. I want to revisit it but I haven't yet. I love fantastic planet. Um, I feel like I might've been a little bit too harsh on that one. The eyes of my mother is the weirdest movie ever. Cause there'd be like a week where I'm like, the eyes of my mother is great. And then there'd be weeks where I'm like, ah, oh, no, it sucks. I was harsh on it at first, but then I relented, but it's good for what it's supposed to be. And I don't know. Harold and mod. I, th- I think I, it's definitely 10 out of 10. Now, 
I think I gave it an 8 out of 10. Harold, Harold and Lana is so good. If you're out there listening and you haven't watched Harold and Maude, it, it, what is it? Like, isn't it like almost 50 years old now? I mean, it's amazing. It 60s, I think. Yeah, it's amazing. Go see this film. It's a, it, it's terrific. 71. Yeah, it's terrific. It's it's worth it. I, I think you can get it on Voodoo for like 10 bucks. It's it's amazing. If you want to do a nice double feature, watch The Graduate and Harold and Maude back to back. G- great recommendations because the graduate i watched it somewhat recently yeah another great movie Dust- they have similar similar topics different tones yeah i probably watched harold mod second you know what's funny is dustin hoffman did the graduate and he was red hot like i'm talking about red hot in hollywood yeah. and they approached him about midnight cowboy and his agent begged him begged him don't take midnight cowboy it'll ruin your career you're red hot right now you don't need this and hoffman took it anyway and look what we got he's also in a Sidney pollock movie famed director of absent of malice <laughs> he plays a uh cross-dresser called tootsie yeah that's from the 80s <laughs> and uh <laughs> at that point dustin hoffman was taking just about anything but yeah now he no wait yeah it was him the was a kfc commercial i yeah, want to say he was in was that it? no like I, I love dustin hoffman man he he's amazing and like he was great in midnight cowboy he was great in uh harold and maude he's done countless other films and he was he's always good i mean even even stuff that's like jokey like slapstick humor like meet the fockers like he was great in that he's a tr- another film club pick that he's in that i thought he was excellent in stranger than fiction dustin hoffman is a tremendous actor and it should be celebrated as such but he's You know, he's kind of like a lot of actors that have been around Hollywood for 30 or 40 years. He's done a lot of crap. You know, he's done a lot of great stuff, but he's done a lot of crap, too. I don't know. I'm making that up my mind. Next next topic. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Sorry. So this was supposed to be a segue into the next topic, but um, it ended up with us talking about movies for way too long, like this podcast usually devolves into uh the the question that came from uh bobby uh patreon backer at cuban swim on twitter that i don't know if we're going to be able to answer this one uh he said how about for film club rank your top 64 films that have been watched reviewed from film club after you rank top 64 make a bracket and battle them out from week to week to determine a winner i i just i don't even know if we do we have 64 picks? We're at 67. Uh-huh. And also, we did our rankings already, so... Yeah, I, I would go like... out on a limb and assume that 2001 Space Odyssey would win. I think that's the highest rated between us both. If I had to pick a winner between... That or Shawshank would be so. Yeah, if we were highest. that, that it's funny you say that because I was going to say, if we we're going to do a tournament-style bracket, I feel like it would be almost silly to do it because and and no offense to bobby it's it's a good question but i just feel like at the end everybody knows it's going to come down to shawshank in 2001 and one of those wins like that's it like those are the two best films we've covered by and far um and then i think if if we were doing a final four right i think it would come down to 2001 shawshank harold and maude and if I had to pick a taxi fourth, taxi driver, <laughs> taxi <biased>. driver, no. <laughs> um, Freddie got fingered. Obviously, is the fourth <laughs> pick. <laughs> no, so my Cinderella story, and I, I hate that we can't do like a full bracket for Bobby, but like my final four, I feel like it would end up Shawshank, two thousand one. I think two thousand one wins in the final against Shawshank, but my final four would be rounded out by Harold and Maude. 
and then my Cinderella story would be under the skin. Oh, that that it's my fourth favorite movie of all time. I feel like it could sneak in there. You know what I'm saying? Like it just sneaks in. My sneak in there is Life Is Beautiful. Ooh, that's a good one too. That's a good one. <laughs> it's so hard to pick, right? Because well, like you know, Goodfellas could sneak in there. Goodfellas could sneak in uh, there. SpongeBob man. could sneak in. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the killing of a sacred deer, or the lobster. Road uh, trip. <laughs> I mean, road trip was like kind of the start of DC Film Club. Though. I think it was like number two. It is number two, I but like it, it kind of started because me and you just like both like this dumb movie. Yeah, yeah, and that was around the time that you actually took a road trip. So, and also. The other movie that kind of started Film Club that we have still never covered is Clerks. <laughs> yeah, Clerks. Clerks is amazing, and everybody should watch. So if Clerks was a Film Club pick, I feel like Clerks would be at least Elite Eight. I feel like Clerks hits that Elite Eight. I feel like it gets in there somehow, some way. But um, thanks for the question, uh, Bobby, and we appreciate that. And he also sent in this other one. Um, that I, I kind of want to get Andy's take on. He says, uh, <laughs> why are you shaking your head, man? <laughs> so <laughs> I can't find it now. Where is it? Oh, it'd be a shame if it's gone. Oh, okay. He says right here, NFL 2020 season is played on Madden 21 using squads. Each team rotates players in to participate in live broadcasts with webcams and all gameplay televised full NFL schedule from week to week, live play by play color commentary and all thoughts. So I need clarification on this, Bobby. Are you talking about this in lieu of the NFL season? Yeah, that's, the, that's the wording. That's the, how he worded it instead of having a season. So I hate it. I'm I'm sorry. Yeah, it's like, stupid. That's I, why I said before that we shouldn't cover it. We shouldn't cover this topic. <laughs> Andy, come on, man. It's a listener question. You have to answer it. You don't have to answer all of them. But I we sent the listener question last we week. I'd rather answer that one this we week. We don't have enough listeners to be picky I, and choosy here. I skipped here. over reasons on broke question, and I think we can. I would rather answer that than this question. To be fair, I want to make this really clear. I felt really bad about that one. So. Um, I, I just, I just don't like the idea. I think that, I think the NFL season is going to happen, man. I think it's going to happen. And you know, I, I don't want to get if, too far off the rails talking about viruses and stuff, but things are starting to open up again. The numbers have kind of stabilized and like, let's be real. I know this is going to make me sound like an idiot and I'm sure I'm going to get some hate for this, but at the end of the day, like, eventually herd immunity is the way that we solve this. Because there, there's no vaccine on, like, in the near future. And there's treatments that are coming out that have been proven to, you know, reduce the fatality rate, which was already very small to begin with. I think the NFL season happens. I think things, by the time we get to September, I think we will be back to a relatively quote-unquote normal state as a country. And I think that a return to the NFL season, like a the normalcy of the NFL season happening, even if it's empty stadiums, would be welcomed by American citizens. And, you know, to go a step further before I let Andy give his take, um, which I think will be a very short one, but, you know, I, I, I think that throughout this whole thing, what has um, been reassuring for me is I feel like the American spirit is alive and well. I think that Americans, regardless of where you stand on things like shutdowns and lockdowns and quarantines and the economy and the financial ramifications, I think the American spirit is alive and well. People want to get back to work. People want to work. People want to get out there and do their jobs and, 
you know, that that is the American way. And I, I think it's refreshing and a wonderful thing to see. So I, I think by September, um, with the ways people are acting now, I think we will be back to normal. And I think that we will see an NFL season. So I don't think this will be necessary. Also, I think that they would run into issues like NASCAR is running into now where um, <laughs> you have NASCAR drivers rage quitting and uh, purposely, a word yeah, <laughs> purposely throwing races and using calling people Nancy, Nan pe calling people Nancy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of Nancy finger going on right there, man. So, uh, yeah, but I mean. I'll Andy, play devil's advocate to okay. this stupid question play I do want to cover. <laughs> oh, come on. Why you got to go um, stupid question? MLB had a players league. Sure, they can have an NFL players league where each team elects one player to play for them. Yeah. And uh, Blake Snell, Bowling Green Hot Rod Legend, won the players league in MLB, if anyone's wondering. Um, sure, do that. But I don't know. Whatever. I don't care. See, but I think the MLB is going to still have a season. I'm not going to watch it. You know, I didn't watch it. You know, I didn't watch the MLB thing. I didn't watch the NASCAR thing. I'm not going to watch the NFL one if they do that. But I'll tell you, a lot of people did. So it kind of makes me wonder, is this something? It, it makes it, it gets your gears turning in your head. Like, maybe this is something that leagues could look at as an extra revenue stream down the sure. road. Like but I'd rather them take thing. the NBA route. Or have NBA sponsored esports teams. Yeah, I like that. That's what the 2K does. Yeah, I like that too. So, now, like, instead of having players play the game, have people that play the game that are really good at the game play the game. Instead of having yeah. players that are objectively worse than professional players. I don't know, man. I, I think there is a little bit of intrigue to having actual players play. I mean, for the non pe people that are like aren't aware of, well, I mean, I guess everyone's aware of esports, but like people that aren't like in esports, I guess yeah. it's more intriguing to watch because like I feel the same way. Basketball, basketball is one of my favorite sports, but if I don't know any of the players or anything about the players, I don't care. I get that. I mean, like. One thing that I always find myself watching every year is WWE puts on a Madden tournament with all their wrestlers. Oh, yeah. And Seth Rollins is clearly the best every year. He he's he he knows what he's doing in Madden, whereas most of those guys don't. But it it's entertaining to watch those guys play Madden because I like watching them in general. So it's you know, it's like They're YouTube. Actors. They are, I mean... Are MLB players actors? Are NFL players actors? Okay, fair enough. You can argue NBA players are, but that's a different story. <laughs> <laughs> that's hot. That's a good one there. Um, but yeah, thanks, Bobby, for the question. Uh, we appreciate it, man. I, I just... I, I hope that it doesn't come to that. I guess that would be my answer. And then I did get your question about... Um, Al talks aliens, but I need to do some preparation for that before we ever like explore that topic. Because I, I, it's I be was a solo thing, or it's gonna be a part of this podcast. Um, me and you need to talk about that separately at some point. So, um, anyway, uh, moving on to entertainment this week. Uh, Xbox Series X gameplay i want to put that i'm, I'm f for anybody watching a video version i'm putting this in air quotes gameplay videos were released on the inside xbox like event i guess you could call it it was like a cyber event it was like a half hour live stream this past week and they promised us that we would get xbox series x gameplay from titles like assassin's creed Valhalla and Madden NFL 21. <laughs> uh, you, <laughs> why are you laughing, Andy? Oh, am, am, the Madden gameplay. The, am I the am I presenting seconds, this poorly? <laughs> the three seconds of Madden gameplay. 
So that's kind of so Andy's reaction was basically all of the internet's reaction. And you guys know I love Xbox. But I wanted to put this topic on there, and I, I don't think that we're going to get a whole lot of discussion out of it. But um, I come on here all the time, and I talk about how great Xbox is and how great of a platform it is and how much I love it. And I've been on it since 2001, and I believe in it so much. But this was disappointing to me as an Xbox fan, as an Xbox supporter since 2001, actually before 2001, because the minute it was announced, I was all aboard i went down to my local eb games and i pre-ordered one before they even knew how much it was going to cost this was disappointing their gameplay again air quotes if you're not watching the video version was exactly what andy said seconds i mean madden it i don't even know if it was gameplay on madden that they showed yeah, they showed Patrick Mahomes reaching the football out at the pylon. That kind of looked more like a cinematic than a... Maybe it could be gameplay with a replay. I I don't know. The I thought they were showing that they're going to add that to the game where players reach the football. In a pylon cam so I could just have to throw out my pants because I just love that pylon cam so much. I just... I, it, I have a different criticism to it, though. Uh, well... I want to hear that, um, but to wrap up before Andy has his uh, take on Inside Xbox, I got to say, Microsoft, you dropped the ball here, man. Like, don't say it's gameplay if it's not going to be gameplay. And everything they showed at the very bottom, it said, like, it said, like, cinematic representative of what gameplay will probably look like. Something along those lines. And I, I, I think everybody saw right through that. And Twitter it was trending. And it, it, it was downvoted massively on YouTube. It's a very disappointing thing from Xbox. And, and I hope they make it right. I, they've got to do something better than this. Um, I'm still buying an Xbox Series X. You guys know that. I'm an what? idiot. No, I'm kidding. I'm, kidding. Guys, I'm getting one day one too. <laughs> you guys know. Well, I'm buying two day one if I can, and you know I'll probably buy a PS5 day one if I if I can if I can find one, um, and if I can afford it, I'll probably buy one of those two day one. But you know, good God, like you guys dropped the ball, Andy. What was your take on this? I didn't care about a single game shown. <laughs> Let let me ask you uh, this part. Do you feel how like how much? How can I phrase this? Is it a is it an addition to the value that Xbox has a program where if you buy it on Xbox One, you get it on Xbox One or Xbox Series X? I felt like that was a given. Okay. So you felt like that was going to happen anyway? Yeah. Okay. So that was, a, that, was a said little, that was a little past, bit of a surprise very to Very similar things. Oh, okay. Well, you know, They've it, it was like, a little bit of a surprise to me. Everything that works on the Xbox once was working on the next console, so I assume games would too, especially them being heavily focused on backwards compatibility. You know, when you say it like that, it kind of makes sense. I felt like it was a given. And then it just it scales up, kind of like Steam, yeah. or if you were to play. Why would they put so much effort into this back catalog for a new console to come out? And oh, you got more 360 games on the new console. We're just gonna forget about the Xbox One. So I do feel like Sony has to up the ante and match that. I feel like that's gonna be a major sticking point because. You know, not everybody upgrades the new console right away. So, yeah, but, the, uh, theoretically, let's say Grand Theft Auto 6 comes out and it releases on PS4, Xbox One, PS5, Xbox Series X, and a lot of people haven't upgraded to PS5 yet. Like, 
why not just you know buy it on your xbox one if you have both consoles and then when you get the xbox i don't know i i think that's gonna i think it's gonna be a really big deal especially when you consider the xbox play anywhere feature where you know you'll be able to take a lot of these games play them on your pc as well so i think that's a good thing um andy says it was given i you know and when he explains it like that it, it makes a lot of sense to me but i do think playstation is going to have to figure something else out very similar yeah. to that in the near future because that, that's a huge value add especially if the xbox series x and the playstation 5 release theoretically right both at 399 price points you know and you got to pick one but the xbox one is supposed to have a discless version for a hundred dollars cheaper yeah you know that's that's something that's been rumored i just hope that it's not what i've heard it is i've heard that there's going to be a discless version that's going to have stripped down specs well, and I mean, really, that's like the rumor that there's going to be three versions. Uh, not the stripped-down specs in this list, but there's like the base model, the disc version of the base model, and then like the ultimate edition. That's supposed to be like $700. It's going to be like mm-hmm. the Xbox... It's going to be like the Xbox One X, but on day one. Well, I want that one. Yeah. So but I that's also just rumors. So. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, yeah but they, like the games that were announced in this... Yeah. Uh... Bright Memory Infinite, the first game they showed. Yeah. I thought it was going to be like Crisis 4. Mm-hmm. And then it wasn't. It's some indie game that was made by one person. Cool. I won't buy it. Um, And then pretty much everything on the rest of the, the showcase, Uh, I, I just didn't care. So I like the way that indie game looked. But again, I'm just like, it wasn't actual gameplay. So, like, I want to see what it's actually going to look like because we all know this. We've been fooled by this for 20 years now. Like, cinematics don't mean anything. I need to see what it's going to actually look like when I play it. You don't like Puddle Scandal? Are you talking about Spider-Man? Yeah. On PS4. That was so stupid, dude. You know, it's I, I, it's so funny. Me and my friends made fun of that for like a solid week. It was great. I don't know. I also at the same time, I'm also like fully admitting to myself that I'm no longer a gamer. Mm. And that well, I gamer in the terms that I play video games, yes. Mm. But I wouldn't classify myself as a gamer because the last game I beat was South Tr- South Park the Stick of Truth. And the before that was Mafia Three when Mafia Three came out. Mafia yeah you know and i never get on and play unless like it's Warzone with friends or like halo campaigns with friends i I have like just no desire to play video games anymore unless it's a, a social event yeah i i got to that point at one point and then i doubled down it's kind of weird like I, I remember when i was oh god i was your age i was uh 19 I was 19 years old. I'm 21. Oh, okay. Whatever, (laughs) bro. So I was, I was 19. This is my second year of college. And, um, I remember my Xbox was like collecting dust, bro. Like I, I was just so caught up in other stuff. And then I, I got out into the workforce eventually. And there's this gap, you know, like there's this gap of like, two or three years where I just didn't play games. And then I got out into the workforce and that's what I would do at night. I I got to a point where I wasn't watching TV or movies or anything like that. I would go home and I would go to my crappy one bedroom apartment. I'd play video games at night. I would play Halo or Call of Duty or Tiger Woods golf. Uh, I I just watch, I mean, not really as much, but I just watch movies. I miss those days, man. I I miss them. I kind of wish I could go back in a way um, to those. I mean, now I'm married and I got to spend time with my wife. And no, just I just get divorced, move move out. It's a terrible sell idea. Sell the house. Terrible idea. Get a one-bedroom apartment, work at Papa John's. 
freaking Papa John's. <laughs> Dude, we got Papa Tia's. Uh, the, the worst thing ever. So it's it's basically a crappy calzone. Um, yeah, like, you know, I kind of miss those days, but they're they're behind me. You know, now my wife falls asleep. I play World of Warcraft or I play Madden or, you know, so it's not that different. Are the queue time still a thing? Sorry. Uh, Where, Q- like, you have to wait 40 minutes to play World of Warcraft or whatever. Dude, it's bad. If you're DPS, My plays it. yeah. yeah. It, if you play DPS, it's bad. If you're a tank or you're a healer, it's not so bad. But, um, you know, I I usually queue up and then do world quests, and then, you know, by the time I get through quite a few of the world quests, like, oh hey, go into the raid. Yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, that's that's it for gaming. I uh, hope you enjoyed that topic. Uh, DC Film Club this week. It is. Uh, is it Leon? Yeah, is Leon it? the professional. Leon the professional. Okay. What did you so, think it was? Uh, Leon. I've been calling it Leon the professional all week, like an idiot. Leon. It's. So, I mean, it doesn't have in the notes, but there's a. Uh, a. Oh, there's wow. like a little over the e. Yeah, it's like a little asterisk. Not, not asterisk. It's a little accent mark. Even though Over I know Umlaut the... is this one and not that one, but I'm still going to call it Umlaut because I'm an uncultured American. Yeah, well, um, regardless, uh, this uh, this film came out in 1994. Uh, Fantastic year of movies, by the way. I have no clue what else came in 94. Pulp Fiction, Forrest Gump, Shawshank Redemption, Lion King, Ooh. Uh, Clerks. Ooh, boy. Uh, Red, Red and White from the Three Colors trilogy, Ed Wood. Uh, Ace Ventura, Pet Detective, uh, the first Santa Claus movie. <laughs> Ace Ventura. Uh, Hoop hey, Dreams, you put Santa Claus Lies, in there. Dumb and Dumber. Speed. Hoop Dreams is pretty Natural good. Natural Born Killers. So Hoop Dreams is good, but... And then the best out of all those? Yeah. The Street Fighter movie. Yeah. So he started <laughs> off really strong. Like, everything through the first half oh, was really good. Naked but... Gun 33 and a third. I actually like the Naked Gun movies. Yeah, they're good. Yeah, I think they're funny. They're dumb, but they're uh, yeah, they're it's like the comedy. So yes, like, it's, it's attempting to be funny. Yeah, they're they're like Austin. <laughs> no, but like they're like kind of like the Austin Powers movies. Where like they're dumb, but they're funny. It's slapstick. Yeah, it's slapstick. So, but like they do, they don't. Oh, by the way, Naked Gun thirty three and a third uh, stars OJ Simpson. Um, fun fact: I did not know he was in that. I forgot about that. Um, I watched it as a kid. They're they're slapstick, but it's like smart slapstick, where there be stuff going on in the background. Oh that yeah, you won't notice, and then you'll re. There's all like every second of it is used to make you laugh, and it's not like dumb filler to make a stupid joke like current comedies are kind it's, of. It's very reminiscent of like Airplane. I mean, yeah. Yeah, where, like, it has those jokes that, like, kind of make you think a little bit, but just a little bit, and then you go, like, oh, ha-ha, yeah. Yeah, he was in that, too, so. Um, But, yeah, the the, the great year for movies, as Andy mentioned. Um, This was my first time watching it. Andy, have you seen this before? Well, the whole point of the film club uh, roulette was that I haven't seen any of them, so. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. I, I said that, but, you know. Well, I forgot, man. I uh, I saw Wizard of Oz. That was the only thing I've seen out of the 80, though. So that'd be a fun thing to talk about. I hate this podcast sometimes. Anyway, uh, so this Why? is my... Why? Because Why? I, I just feel like I get corrected for an hour and then... I got corrected on Twitter. But not by me. Yeah, by, by Bob. But we're co-hosts. All anyway, right, no, I'm just messing with you, man. I don't I'll care. never correct you. I'll let you be ignorant. Oh, come the rest on, man. Don't, don't be like, <laughs> <laughs> that's even worse. That's, what do you want from me? That's you even more. You or leave you, you get one or the other. That's even more condescending. Okay. Well, anyway, I. I, I <laughs> Which one, what, what do you want, Alex? What do you want? Just, just. Keep everything the way it is now. Just leave it. <laughs> just, just leave me alone and let me talk about this film. Get out of my room, God. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs>
I hate you. <laughs> so, so Leon the Professional, 1994, directed by Luc Besson. I, I don't know how to pronounce his last name. B E S S O N. Um, starring uh, I don't have it up. I should probably pull it up. <laughs> Jay Reno, I think is his name. No, oh, sorry, Gene Reno, a 12 year old Natalie Portman, I believe, and Gary Oldman. And Alex, what do you think of the movie? <laughs> All right, so um, I was really pleasantly surprised. I I didn't know what to expect going into this, and with most action movies from the 90s, you kind of expect something that doesn't have a lot of depth. You expect something kind of like the last movie that we picked. Well, we didn't pick it. It was a Patreon pick from Jared Predator, which I liked, you know, and I'm not saying it's bad, but usually action movies don't have a lot of depth and storytelling to them. And what I really liked about Leon the Professional is... It's a good action movie. There's some good action scenes in here. Some scenes that really um, kind of had me on the edge of my seat, especially that one where he's like trying to escape through the alley, you know, and it, it doesn't really go to plan. It, it's really good from an action perspective, but then there's depth here, you know, like I, I, I care about Leon, like, he yeah. is this cold, heartless, uh, he calls himself a cleaner, you know? Yeah. And um, he wants to be cold and heartless, but then here comes Natalie Portman's character, and she softens him up. And she, like, she hardens, like, him... And then he softens up yeah. like her. It's like this really good character development. Like they both give each other the element of their collective personalities that are missing. And it, it, it's really good. And, and you love it. And you kind of fall in. I, like I fell in love with these two characters. Like I, I, I got very invested in their well-being. And I think that's great storytelling. And the other part of the storytelling that I really liked is the stakes are always high. You know, Natalie Portman is on the run. Leon is, uh, you know, he's he's a hitman. You know, like he's always on the run. The They've got people that want them dead. The stakes are high. And I think that's a real big part of great storytelling. There have to be stakes and whoever wrote this really understood that. And and throughout the film, um, you never really feel like either one of them are safe. You know, you, you, you feel like they're both minutes away from death. And um, that sounds really dark, but it just makes for a really great action film. Um, Gary Oldman plays a tremendous villain in this. Uh, usually Gary Oldman is a good guy. You know, in in most films yeah. that I've seen him in, he's he's the good guy, and uh, in this, he's he's so good as a bad guy. You know, he's he he really you can't stand him. He he's such a great actor. Um, but Gary Oldman, Shakespearean trained actor, it it shows here. Uh, you, you you can't stand the guy. He he's he's great at making you hate him. Um, the writing is terrific. I love the way they filmed it. It it looked really good for a movie that was from the 1990s. I think it it definitely holds up today. Uh, like the score, score was really good. Um, just overall, I, I I felt like it was a tremendous action film. And you know, I said this at the beginning, and I'll say it again. In the 90s, most action films didn't have any depth to them, didn't have any personality didn't have the storytelling element that we all really want when we see a film and this did and um I loved it for it. It, it it's it's tremendous. I I I'm going to watch it again. I'll probably notice some things that I didn't notice before. Uh but 
outstanding. I, I, I hate that this didn't do better in theaters. Andy, what were your thoughts? Um, I, yeah, you, I, you got it. Uh, <laughs> I like that it has a very Harold and Mod esque feel. Oh, definitely. That age. In, like, yeah, I didn't hit on that. Two that people, age difference. Two is... people that shouldn't be friends. Yeah. Become friends and they go through this together. And you know what's crazy about it is in a very Harold and Mod esque way. Natalie Portman yeah, is the a lot falls in love is a lot like Harold where they push it. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like even with the older person being like, no, 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 you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they don't go as far as Harold and Maude, but well, Harold and Maude, <laughs> Harold and Maude, they were both consulting consenting adults. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, that's, they were that's both adults. different. That's different. <laughs> Natalie Portman definitely didn't, you know, push it that far. Didn't go to Harold levels, but you know, like at one point she does propose. Yeah. That and when they're eating dinner. But to me, here's the here's the thing. Like we we made the comparison to Harold and Maude, and there's nothing wrong with Harold and Maude, by the way. It's wonderful. Watch it. But um to me, it was great character development because, like, it shows the naivete of Natalie Portman's character, but then it also shows the underlying morality of the Leon character, right? Because if he was a really terrible person, he would take advantage of that, but he doesn't. Yeah. So it makes you appreciate that character more right even though he's a hitman right he he won't do that and then like at the very beginning he talks about no women no children right you respect that he's very principled but i'm sorry andy continue no i mean i butted it i don't have any major complaints it's a movie that i think is great but i didn't fall in love with it so it's not really a knack towards the movie. It's more a knack towards, I guess, myself. Um, it's a movie, like Alex said, action movie of the 90s. It's a movie that I should have hated. But it's, you know, it's fine. It's a great movie. I don't have any complaints. Besides the music being loud at certain points, but that's me being a boomer. No, that's, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. That's because like just a minute complaint. <laughs> no, you're right, because... It's it's funny you mention that because the sound mixing, God, now I feel like I'm really nitpicking. So my wife always gets mad at me for this, but I I nitpick on sound. Andy, you make videos, right? And I make no. videos. Well, <sighs> I hate I hate this podcast. I hate this podcast. I gave that up, Alex. <laughs> Okay, let's reset. (laughs) You used to make videos. Yeah. You know that when you make videos, even the most basic video, it'll probably have two, three, four, maybe five different audio tracks. Right? Sure. Okay. So when you're making a movie, you know, you film it. Um, so let me give you an example. If I was making a vlog and there was a background music track and maybe I had a, I don't know, From a voice. the bar across the street. Yeah. For reference of vloggers. You would try to mix the audio so that the music doesn't overwhelm the vocals, yeah. right? Um, if you make music, for example, I know somebody who's in the music industry and they always try to perfectly balance the instrumental and their vocals because you don't want the vocals to overwhelm the instrumental, but you don't want or the each instrumental instrument between each other. Yeah, you want balance, right? And in videos, it's kind of weird, especially when you're filming something like maybe uh, a, a film, a short film, a TV show, etc. You don't want that music to to overwhelm the the vocals or the ambient sound of the scene. 
And, um, you know, Andy points something out that I, I forgot to bring up and it, it would be my one minor criticism of this film is the audio design is off. Uh, it was so bad at one point that I actually resynced my headphones. I thought my headphones were glitched. That. No, but like, I was Maybe like, it was the version you watched. No, it it was what you were talking about where the music was too loud. Oh, I gotcha. Yeah, and I was like, this can't be right, right? I was like, the this seems this seems off. Like this seems like it's, you know, the gain's too high or whatever. So I resync my headphones and then I went back and I'm like, oh no, like, like Andy said, the the music was just way too high. Um, yeah. There were also several points in the film. Um, I was listening on a surround sound headset. And I was listening to a version that had um, stereo audio. And there were a few times where the stereo, it was too high on the left and not high enough on the right and vice versa. It was just, it, it was just something off. The audio mixing wasn't perfect. And it, I've seen this before and in previous times where I've seen this, I went back and researched it and I found out that the, um, the original audio that they took on the scene was, was effed up. So they did the best they could in post, but they couldn't reshoot it. So they, they just do the best they can and it's, it's off. And then, um, like Andy said, there there were a few point points where the, the soundtrack was, where the score was just way too high. Um, but again, I'm nitpicking. You know, my, my wife audio calls me an audio snob all the time because of stuff like that. So um, yeah, I, don't know. I feel like for some film clubs, people take away the fact that they think I hate the movie. No. In fact, I've only ever actually hated like maybe two or three. And they're all my picks. No. I'm kidding. <laughs> I, I definitely, the movie I hate the most is definitely a fan pick. Absence of Malice? Man of Steel, easily. Top, hands down. <laughs> uh, Woo! <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm fucking... But, yeah, yeah no, like, I don't know. It's hard to, like, explain your opinions on a movie. I mean, do you... And get the full point across, I guess. Yeah, I mean, you, you like what you like. Because people take negative opinions more... I, like if you have an equal opinion, negative and positive, people will, will focus more on the negative one. You're right. I think sometimes, especially nowadays, I feel like when it comes to film, people take negative opinions way more personally than they do, say, like someone agreeing with them, if that makes sense. So like, you're right. Um, I would say I don't think that Man of Steel is even close to the worst thing that we've ever covered on here. I didn't say that. I'm just saying. Well, I, I mean, I'm just, you know, I'm just throwing that out there. Um, it's not my lowest rated one. Yeah. But, like, well. I think Freddy Got Fingered is my second lowest rated one. But in a weird way, I would, if I, it's more of a favorite than a lot of those at the bottom. It if is. If that makes any sense. Yeah. I mean, Freddy Got Fingered, the thing about it is it's sort of brilliant in a really dumb way, you know? And because of that, I think maybe some people would put that over something like a, you know, I mean, let's let's just be real. Superhero movies are are not cinema. They're just they're just not like it. It just isn't. And I I hate to say it because I love superheroes too. But you know, I mean, as I look, like if I log into Voodoo right now and you go, Alex, show me the best film you have on your Voodoo right now. I'm not picking a superhero movie. It's it's not even going to be close. You know, to the top of the list. It, it just, it's just not. So, you know, sorry, but it just isn't. 
But overall, Leon Better float your boat. Yeah, uh, going back to Leon the professional, um, I loved it. I would recommend anybody who hasn't seen this, like go and see this film. It, it's actually pretty affordable. I think um, I, I picked it up for I think nine ninety nine on Vudu. I watched uh, on Netflix. Well, there you go. It's on Netflix. Japanese Netflix. Well, get Japanese Netflix. Yeah, there you go. Express VPN. You can get that for like three ninety nine a month. Express VPN. Hit me up in the inbox. We need a sponsor. Like Nine or twelve dollars. Well, not if they hit me up in the DMs and say, yeah. "Hey, yo, like maybe we give you a promo code for DCD." But yeah, like um, I I bought it for nine ninety nine on Vudu. I was happy to buy it for nine ninety nine. Um, as Andy said, there's ways to see it, um, elsewhere. And I think it's also on Crackle. Like, Letterbox told me it was on Crackle, but I never checked. Yeah, I, I just bought it. I thought it was going to be good, and I was pleasantly surprised that it was great. So, I gave this a 7 out of 10. Huh. I really liked it. The rare occasion where we agree. Mm-hmm. I would have thought you would have given it a higher than 7 out of 10 based on your previous statements. But yeah, 7 out of 10. And it's also a funny movie when you look at the director's other movies. Mm-hmm. His other movies, The Fifth Element, um, Lucy. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, he this is like, I mean, I, I, objectively, I probably, I mean, I guess you can't be objective with art, but mass people probably like The Fifth Element. But like, this guy has a bunch of movies that I don't like. And then he has this one, like the Fifth Element, Lucy, and then Valorant, a historic flop from a couple years ago. Hmm. It's just like weird that he directed this, and then he also wrote the screenplays for uh, the Taken movies and the Transporter. So I liked the first Taken movie. It's amazing. Everything after that, kind of eh. Um, Transporter was good like great action movies but here's the thing i saw the later taken movies they're still good action movies they're just not as good like you know character development wise or whatever but um this was good and i I would tell anybody who hasn't watched it go check it out it it is good it's worth watching at least once um so that's uh, Leon the Professional, great pick by Andy. My pick for next week is uh, something that is a little different. Allegedly, it's bad from previous conversation. Mm, yeah, maybe, maybe not. So um, here's the thing. Uh, I've noticed everything I pick gets universally panned by people oh, in the... I Go ahead. Keep on going. Keep on going. Uh, It gets universally panned by people in the comments, uh, people on Twitter, Andy. Um, So I figured I would give you guys an alley-oop of sorts, Uh, something that, uh, you know, you can take a big steamy dump on, um, you know, and I don't care. Do you like the movie? it, it It won't bother me. Um, I like it, but I understand it has flaws. So, so it's like a Freddy got fingered pick. Pretty similar, yeah. So this is not like Brokeback Mountain. Okay, I think Brokeback Mountain is brilliant, and I think Andy's yeah. wrong, and I think everybody in the comments on the YouTube video is wrong. I think it's brilliant filmmaking i think it's a brilliant story i think it's great storytelling but everybody wants to tell me how terrible it is so that's fine i'm gonna give you something really terrible (laughs) and that is a movie that is considered by many to be the one of the worst movies of all time it came out in 2000 oh please what i think i know what it is let, let, let's, I, let's, I think I'm gonna like it. Yeah, I think I'm gonna like let's, it. Let's let's play a game. Who's the star of the movie? Uh, I, I I don't know. 
Okay, uh, if you have to think that long about it, you don't know what it it's is. E- it's either a Wayans brother. Nope. Or like Carmen Electra. Not even close. Calpin. Not even close. Nothing like that. So it's a movie from 2000. It's something that I've been discussing on Twitter quite frequently as of late. And I've been arguing the merits of, even though it's terrible. And that's 2000's Battlefield Earth. Oh my God. Starring John Travolta. <laughs> I wish it was what I thought and it was. And Barry Pepper. <laughs> I wish it was what I thought it was. Join me on this quest where we follow the story of Turl conquering Earth. Enjoy. It's better than Dick Figures the movie. <laughs> This you is can, what you get. This is what all of you get. It has a get. 3% in Rotten Tomatoes. All three of you listeners, this is what you get for agreeing <laughs> with Andy and his cynicism because of so this. You, you can find it on Voodoo Prime for two ninety nine, YouTube and Google Play for three ninety nine, and I also believe it's on Crackle. I will punish you. JK, it's not on Crackle. I will punish you all every third week. It's on Denmarkian and Netflix if you want to watch it the way I watch it. Yeah, things. just get VPN. Don't give John Travolta any money. But I will continue to punish you guys every three weeks until somebody sends me a tweet and tells me that Midnight Cowboy and Brokeback Mountain are their first and second favorite movies of all time. Until that happens, you will be punished every third week with a terrible film. Enjoy. Yeah. Uh, well, I was going to say is that uh, there Spinks are some redeeming qualities. Leon the Professional, a 10 out of 10. Rightfully so. It's amazing. Also, you mentioned Shakespeare at one point, and it reminded me of this thing that I saw. Mm. Of th- this guy was arguing with a guy that's super into MCU movies. Yeah. And the guy goes like, yeah, I, I sh- this guy that like was against MCU movies, but like didn't try to portray that he was. He's like, yeah, it's very Shakespearean esque. And then the guy that's like in ended MCU movies is like, oh, yeah. So like like Shakespeare, great playwright. So they're great movies. And the guy was like, no, no you missed the point. <laughs> no, they're Shakespearean because when Shakespeare's plays came out, they're very low brow, very low brow. Yeah. And I just thought it was funny. I mean, it. Uh, so it is kind of a trope that people talk about Shakespearean literature and they say, well, in its time it was kind of viewed poorly. Yeah, that's what, like, well, <laughs> nobody liked it. Yeah, but I don't know, dude. I think it's really care. You got to be careful because there there's elements of Shakespearean writing that, that are timeless and Shakespearean yeah. storytelling is actually really, um, and, and he's very clear about this in his writing. He understands that he took from previous writers. Like we call it Shakespearean because he's the one who I made mean, it a famous theory that he's, not one person, but that's fair. I mean, that that's actually a really good conspiracy theory to explore. But like the thing about Shakespearean storytelling is it, it's a classic three arc structure and yeah. it's, it's very similar to previous things like fables. And um, I can't think of the other uh, name that they have elsewhere in the world for it. But like there are it, it's it's about storytelling and that that's the thing no. that i appreciate about shakespearean acting shakespearean writing um and then now even today people implement uh, portions of shakespearean acting and and storytelling into their own screenplays and television shows and and so on and it's the the one persistent thing is is a good three arc structure and um, an idea of what's going to happen next and keeping the audience in suspense. And I think those are valuable things when it comes to storytelling. And I think, you know, we, we always talk about professional wrestling on this show. 
and professional wrestling, you know, when you look back and, and you look at good angles, good feuds, good pay-per-views, those had good storytelling. And when you look at that storytelling behind it, oftentimes it's Shakespearean style storytelling. It's persistent in our culture. And anybody who's English speaking and enjoys any kind of English speaking media, you probably enjoy Shakespearean style storytelling, writing, screenplays, acting, etc. And I, I think that it's important to be cognizant of that as a viewer um, and not dis discount it. Um, and, and as far as the MCU goes, I think the MCU is as far as Shakespearean storytelling as you can get. We're it's, running out of time. It's Crash TV. Yeah, we are running out of time. I'm sorry. I, I got off on way too many tangents this week. Sorry, guys. Um, I apologize for that. That's on me. Um, I want to wrap up uh, this DC 80. So um, crazy that we're on 80. Um, want to remind you as always, uh, t-shirt link in the description. We just released the Altox aliens t-shirt. You guys loved it. It immediately got tied with the DCD, um, logo t-shirt as the top selling t-shirt in the store all time. So, um, I want to thank you guys who bought one of those based on, uh, a segment on one episode of the podcast. That's kind of crazy. And then um, if you do buy one, uh, we get somewhere between 2 to $6, depending on uh, what price you buy it at. So um, that helps us out. Also, Patreon. Go to patreon.com slash podcast. You can support us for as little as a dollar a month and get early access to the show, all kinds of other great perks. And then um, it scales up from there. I'm, I'm not going to go through all the perks right here um but they are there if you go to as i said patreon.com slash dcd podcast i want to thank our current patreon backers we have dumbest sphinx dumbest sphinx in the egg tier and then in the gold tier we have jared daniel bobby and now a newcomer drake drizzy drake has joined the gold tier so uh, I want to thank all you guys for supporting us on Patreon. It really means a lot, especially in today's environment. I can't thank you enough. Um, it it pays for our podcast hosting and the domain name and the email addresses and all that. And it, Alex's McDoubles. And Alex's McDoubles. Uh, I, get, I get two a month now. Uh, thanks to Drizzy Drake, but yeah, seriously, uh, all joking aside, you guys basically pay for the podcast hosting, the email addresses, the domain name, everything, um, that comes along with hosting this show. Cause it is not free to create this kind of content. So thank you very much. You guys are awesome. Um, and then, uh, yeah, if you can't support us monetarily, go to, uh, YouTube, you can subscribe to us on there. It's free. And then you can leave us an iTunes review. Um, that will help other people find the show. Um, and that's also free. And then finally, easiest way to support us. That's in addition, free. Tell a friend. Just be like, Hey man, this DC podcast is amazing. Go tell to dead. Ch yeah. You just, just tell them go to dead channel duo.com and you can find out everywhere you can listen to this show every week. Tell your boss. You might get a raise. You might, you might be hey, have an interview coming up. Wear a DC shirt, and they'll be like, "What's that?" Meeting like, the future in-laws. Yeah, tell them about the podcast. You them. Wear like, the Is shirt. The podcast where that one guy hates every single movie, and the other guy, yeah, uh, talks about likes aliens. Everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wear your Al talks aliens segment. You look like an intellectual. Yeah, and. Ask them if they believe in Bigfoot. Pretty sure they're going to think you're affluent then. They'll definitely give you their daughter's hand in marriage. That's a that's a that's a risky play. Or son, I don't know. That's a risky play. Like I feel like for my stepdad it would work. If you're like you leave, my, my stepdad loves Bigfoot. 
Um, but can, if someone can we like, have them, can we have him guest on the show? Uh, like, no, I'd he to... he's very uh, like cover the webcam with duct tape type of guy. Like, well, we can make a government like tracking a... my search history type of guy. Oh my god, I want to talk to him now. <laughs> Andy, we'll, we'll see. We'll get, see in the future. <laughs> next next time you're sick, he's stepping in for you. I'll My just turn listens, the webcam off. So if and Bill's probably listening as well. Hi he Andy, hates that I just said his name. Hi Andy's mom. Hi Bill. Um, I'll also, the end. And, well, Andy's mom. If you ever listen to this, she you listens seem, every episode. Yeah, she she always seems so nice. Um, I what? Sure. Get, <laughs> well, she's always. <laughs> She always seems nice to me on Twitter. Yeah, she's De- great. Debbie, right? My best friend. I wouldn't say her name. I'd bleep that out. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Diane. <laughs> um. <laughs> anyway, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, man. I, I totally had something that I wanted to say. Now I forget. It was something about having somebody else host on the podcast. Well, there we go. Too bad. I'll think of it later. I want Drake to come on again. He, he, I was going to ask him to come on today, but he, uh, he's moved. Yeah. Moving. Yeah. This this show went way longer than I thought it would. Yeah, I have to pee really bad, and I've been waiting for this to end for. A oh, second. okay. Well, that's going to do it for <laughs> DCD number eighty. Um, thanks for listening. We'll see you next week. Bye. Sure. Goodbye.